This is Akash Bani. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on results of Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim Assembly elections. The participants are Subhimal Bhattacharjee, political analyst, and Lalima Anija Dang, anchor. The assembly elections for the 60 seats in Arunachal Pradesh and 32 seats in Sikkim were conducted on the 19th of April concurrently with the first phase of Lok Sabha elections. The counting for the Andhra Pradesh and Odisha assemblies will be held on 4th of June along with Lok Sabha elections 2024. But the results now available for Arunachal Pradesh and Sikkim today we delve into the outcomes of these states and to discuss this we have with us Mr. Subhimal Bhattacharjee, welcome, Mr. Subhimal, to Akashwani Studio. Let's talk about Arunachal Pradesh first. In the 2019 Assembly elections, BJP secured 42 seats in Arunachal Pradesh, and this time there is an increase of four seats for the BJP in the state. Yeah, definitely. I think um, it's a very welcome result for the BJP ahead of the announcement of the general election results. But uh, what you have to consider is that uh, there has been a lot of work happening on the ground in Arunachal Pradesh. The central government has really invested in infrastructure build up in the state and more specifically the border infrastructure build up. As you know Arunachal is a very sensitive state yes. and the Chinese misadventures on and off uh, still happen there. Name different uh, places of Arunachal in their own terms. Mm-hmm. Very important that uh, the, you know the people of Arunachal Arunachal Pradesh will secure people of Arunachal Pradesh feel they are a part of India the work based on the infrastructure that has been built up the little bit of work that has happened even in the state in terms of entrepreneurs coming up in terms of business gaining ground so Arunachal Pradesh is also less industry kind of a state and you don't see that heavy industries can really come up because of the fragility ecosystem and the geography so but the opportunity for many young people to be entrepreneurs uh, to do a lot of stuff which could be around the cottage industry and all that gives a lot of confidence that both in the center and the state there are efforts to give us opportunities to help us uh, grow ourselves so i think you know that's the reflection of 42 to 46 and you saw 10 of the mls were elected unopposed including the chief minister and the deputy, deputy chief, chief minister, minister. For a long time we talked about look east policy now now we have we talk about act east policy so we see a lot of as you said infra work which is being done by the central government in Arunachal Pradesh and definitely it would have helped the people there do you see it was challenging for the fact that it's very multicultural there are many indigenous tribes there so what were the issues which were being discussed were there local issues because the multiplicity of the culture and the tribes there was that a challenge No I don't think well the inter tribe uh, challenges remain but you know some tribes are very dominant and the leaders from those uh, tribes for example the nishi tribe they have carried all other tribes and the leaders also along so everyone got an opportunity for economic activities in their area there were some allegations of corruption other things that today comes in politics and elections very much but what the people has seen and to my mind it's very clear that there was a focused way to develop the infrastructure there was a focused way to clear the perception that you know northeast uh, was an investable region and uh, disturbances have gone away and arunachal being a border state the people there also felt that you know our allegiance is to india and we have to be very strong we have to be not only be very strong but have to be seen to be very strong so that is what drives the people also towards such a heavy kind of a mandate not a fractured mandate also i'd like to ask you how was the election i was there a bit of a challenge considering the topography of the place there are remote areas in arunachal pradesh it's a sensitive state could you throw a light on arunachal pradesh is still one of the far flung states and there are a lot of places where in a pool officers have to work for 5 6 hours cross all kinds of rivers and all you know not all places you can always build up bridges and all a lot of efforts have gone to hold the elections uh, even uh, people in a village where there would be uh, you know 20 villagers also officials have got to that extent so i think the challenges were there but more than the challenges the participation in democracy by everyone every tribe every village and everything i think that's the real spirit that was reflected Let's shift our focus to the opposition. The NPP retains its five seats, and the Congress slipped to just one, with some seats for PPA and Independent. So, how would you see this whole picture? The most important point is that the you know Congress is not opening its account when it ruled for so many years. up to 2016 if you see when the present chief minister and all they shifted to bjp and since then they have grown 
if you see npp now npp per se is a kind of a meghalaya dominated party because it's a conrad sangma's party but they have few mlas in uh, nagaland as well as uh, up here in arunachal so if you even think of a pan northeast regional party in that party i still don't think you know they have really gained a lot of ground and there isn't an opportunity or a situation where a pan northeast uh, regional party could emerge so they would at best uh, you know be a very very silent uh, opposition because uh, there is a thumping majority that the bjp has got mm-hmm. just the way they were in the previous assembly that's how they will still perform others uh, you know really don't carry any weight maybe the, some of the independent is actually will join bjp also when it comes to taking a call chief minister pema khandu and deputy cm chauna me were elected unopposed the fact that they are of the same party as we have in the center would that uh, help in governance and uh, has that raised the aspirations of the people there that means a greater synergy better synergy for the people yeah well this is something that uh, is not a new phenomenon in north east it's there for a long time wherever the whichever party is in the center they all are on that side so for a congress it is to happen like now it is bjp so wherever you see they are all allying and thus arunachal uh, since 2016 when all of them have come and bjp is going so even without an organic growth the way they started and the way they will continue i think this alignment will never go away you know the double engine concept that is spoken about yes, this is often. going to remain and this gives them the hope because because you see they are very much dependent upon the center for their finances and money and budget their local productivity still remains very low to sustain the kind of economy that they have hence they are dependent upon the center and they are very wise in this aspect that they always align with whoever is in the part in the center let's move on to sikkim now in sikkim the ruling sikkim krantikari morcha skm as we call it in short has emerged as a sole leading party and this year's election results and secured 31 out of 32 seats it's just an absolute landslide victory again how do we interpret that very big victory because mm-hmm. if you look at it for sikkim democratic front rule for 25 years the sikkim has a personality driven uh, political system that earlier was with pawan chamling 25 years before that in honor bahadur bhandari you know. but now if you see the current chief minister prem kumar tamang of course he was under mr chamling and he was very close to him politically and then he came out and started this but the very important point to note is that from last election to this election they have grown uh, so much they have gained 58% of the vote uh, this time the other important point is that when you know bjp is there bjp is also trying to uh, gain its uh, fit in the state not only gain actually expand because they had a few mlas uh, last time many of them who went from sdf and they put up their candidates in many of the seats so when they were fighting and with resources and everything if you see such numbers for the sdf it's uh, quite a clear message that the sikkimese people want the regional flag flying strong and not only strong make it more stronger and be completely dominant on that so even if you look at sikkim being a border state with arunachal and galwan was not very far away they also have the same things like the arunachal the aspirations of needing to be seen to be very strong against uh, chinese uh, troubles so those concerns also still uh, you so and uh, you know the regional party being there so i think that's a uh, quite a mandate that uh, speaks of many things there is a bit of irony here we saw the former chief minister's party mr chamling's party sdf who he ruled for about 25 years and this time he lost from both the constituencies there seems to be an irony there but critics say that the present government built up on a foundation which was uh, created a strong foundation which was created for sikkim by mr chamling sikkim became a 100% organic state people are very prosperous if i may call it and happy and there are lot many things they gained the tourism boomed and uh, agriculture of course is good because it's organic and there are many many firsts to it i could go on and on so do you think it's a fair trial uh, by the people well it's not a possibly a fair trial by the people but then you know this is a democracy people try and vote for the best they think who can uh, deliver for them and if mr tamang's party or his colleagues have been able to build up on what mr chamling provided that's i think also a message uh, to the people to see that you know so to take a much wiser decision so in a way it is good because the standards of democracy are raised 
much higher and the way tourism and related aspects you mentioned about agriculture also the way it has grown in the last few years it's a phenomenal so i think you know people still want that continue to remain so even if possibly they are seen to be unfair to mr chamling but mm-hmm. they are still fair to the aspirations of uh, the state collectively what would be the aspirations of the people of sikkim considering that it's a very in hindi we call it samriddh state good per capita income what are the aspirations of the people of sikkim no. which probably the present uh, cm has targeted no, i think uh, a sustained growth and uh, quality living because you know the fragility of the environment the the worries from a uh, very belligerent uh, neighbor where it is actually located environmental uh, troubles are uh, not shows on and off in the rainy seasons right now landslides and everything keep on coming so even that how they can build up their sustainable infrastructure grow it use their soft powers to give a quality of life to the people and yet remain a very vibrant state of uh, this country i think these are the aspirations that people definitely have in the background of what you have uh, just talked about that uh, as i said the irony of the present government and the past government and this landslide victory what are the implications of these election results on the national landscape very important aspect because if you see both these states bordering china have a very important uh, role as far as india's uh, national integration national security perspectives go so when you have decisive governments in both these states uh, they will be able to not only govern properly but also they will be able to take care when if any contingency arises and uh, by and large the plans that the union government has for the northeast in terms of developing the infrastructure in terms of providing them financial support for so many of the flagship schemes in terms of giving them opportunity to all their culture then food habits dress habits all these those aspirations to go around the country as well as outside i think all of that is a very very vibrant uh, scenario so it's very important for this country you know the perception that northeast was away always kept those two states also away now in the last few years that perception has been reduced the ferry ferry and the mainland seem to have come far much uh, closer although i don't like to use these terms but that's how it has been perceived so in the last few years that's dwindling and as a result of which so many people are going to arunachal pradesh so many arunachal pradesh will go across the country there were students have been in delhi for always but right. then people going around from arunachal across different parts of the country i think this is phenomenal so that intermingling that getting northeast into everything and you had mentioned about actis the whole idea of actis is also to see that those regions also prosper economically so i think the results are very very important and come at a point of time when the country is growing economically when the country is going in its foreign power status yes. these two states also have an important uh, role and the fact that the prime minister and many of his ministers have made many visits to the northeast quite validates the fact that they wanted to integrate the northeast and the people and if i may be very specific the hearts of the people of the northeast to the heart of the rest of the india rather and uh, as you said that earlier the northeast was a kind of a sideline but not anymore now they are they have been nicely integrated into the national mainstream uh, this uh, you think validates the people's aspirations and the fact that they have voted for the center oh, absolutely i think uh, the last 10 years prime minister modi has really ensured that uh, the states uh, spend the money and the report comes back here so mm-hmm. money is spent on the people and not gobbled by the politicians or the leaders two uh, there is more intermingling three the ministers from here go and look at the respective ministries and four most important thing winning the hearts of the people the prime minister himself had gone so many times yeah. attires and self in their local dresses they all feel very happy and uh, him a part of their old community and that's the whole sense of northeast that you know we have seen in our childhood and even right now i feel has a prospect to connect everyone so hoping that uh, the beauty uncorrupted beauty of northeast uh, really entices more people as, as tourists and as their own people it's probably also a work in progress more to go we've come so far and still way to go thank you very much mr subimal for talking to us and thank coming you. to akashvani studio thank you so much you are listening to our discussion on results of arunachal pradesh and sikkim assembly elections the participants were subimal bhattacharya political analyst and Lalima Anisha Dang anchor This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of Akashvani 
You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official.